Michael McGee here. In today's video, we're going to take this meat and this fat, part of this fat, and we're going to make our third experimental sausage of pepperoni. Now, this here happens to be wild pig meat. This is our mangalitsa fat. Now, so far, we've done a deer pepperoni and a mangalitsa pepperoni. This will be our first wild deer pepperoni. As you can see, I've got the pieces already cut up in this freezer bag. I'm just going to open it up. It's been setting out, not out, but it was setting in a ice chest all night. And it should be, at this point, frozen, but not too frozen to cut up. That's what we're going to try. If it's frozen hard as a rock, it won't cut. See what we can do here. And the reason I like to do it at this stage right here of... Uh, Frostiness is because the meat is so chilled. It's perfect. This meat's probably like 30 degrees Still partially frozen. We can throw our seasoning on it and get it ground up before it gets hot And my grinder sitting outside in the cold So when I bring it in and start the grinding my grinder will be Basically frozen just like it came out of a freezer and the meat won't warm up as quickly either that way I'm gonna try to go right down the middle of this bad boy this can be a little bit dangerous, a little bit dangerous. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't fall away from danger. We just try to do dangerous stuff carefully. Sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. Look at that. One way to make it a little safer is to always go half instead of trying to take pieces off the side. Let's go right down the middle. That'll make it where it don't try to flip on you. Frank, beautiful fat. Not hear you. You hear me. Not you hear me. Try to get these dishes done. Why? Oh, got a headache. You got a headache? You are a headache. I know it. Make my head hurt. All right, here's a perfect example to show you the difference between wild pork and and tame mangalitsa pork. Tame mangalitsa pork obviously has a lot of fat. I mean a lot of fat. But look at the coloration of the meat. You got that same red meat. And that's one thing that people really like about the wild pork is that it's so red. But then they don't like certain things about the wild pork either. But the mangalitsa, it's got the best of both worlds. It is unbelievably good flavor to savor plus because you know fat packs flavor but it's got that red meat man oh man oh man all right for your salt you're gonna put one and a half teaspoons per pound that's all you gotta know black pepper you want a half a teaspoon per pound so if this is seven we're gonna go three and a half one two three and a half <laughs> Okay, if you've been watching my channel long by now, you know that's when I stop measuring right there. Everything else is just going to be poured on. And I've been trying different things. And today I'm going to be using smoked paprika. Now in a pepperoni, paprika is your number one ingredient. After salt, I would say. And of course, I've done two batches already, so I know kind of what I've been getting in my flavor. So I'm gonna go heavier on the paprika this time than I have been going because I kinda of like it. I kinda of do like it. Now after paprika, one of the main ingredients you want is anise. That's the way my wife says it. If it's pronounced different, just let me know. But anyway, you have been watching my channel, you know I've been using fennel. I didn't have anise. Now I don't have fennel. And I have a niece, and honestly, it smells about the same. So we're gonna go actually fairly heavy with the anise on here, simply because that is your pepperoni flavor. We're gonna just do a light onion powder, just like this. This is not something we want to be overpowering, but definitely there. Same with coriander, just a dash here and there. We're gonna just go about as much garlic powder as we did the onion powder, just a touch. And now we've got something that really speaks Italian and that's oregano. 
we're just going to put some of that on there. And then after the oregano, we're going to put thyme on and we are done at that point. That's it. Nothing else. We're going to grind this right quick and then after we grind it, we're going to mix, mix, mix. We've got a few other things that we're going to put into it. Let's do it. We're going to change this out and we are going to put the stuffer on while he gets the stuffing on i'm going to mix some more stuff into this here and as you can see the cold is showing through this look at that that's cold and that's the way you want it right there folks all right at this point there's only three things left i'm going to put into it that is we got to ferment this for a day or two behind this stove we want to get it started on the right track. We don't want it getting nothing bad in it. We're going to put red wine in it to get it something to eat. So I'm going to put that in there now. I'm going to put two cups in. One and two. This is the third time we did this and it has worked to perfection. I have never used nitrates in my pepperoni before. But right here, I'm going to try some Morton's Tender Quick that I've, I've had it on my shelf for literally probably 10 years or longer, maybe 15 years. And it contains salt, sugar, sodium nitrite, nitrate, sodium nitrite, and polyethylene glycol or whatever. So I'm going to just reach right in here. One, two, three, four. Five. I'm just going to do five teaspoons, not tablespoons, because I don't know about it much. I ain't going to go overboard too much on that. I'm going to put me in some potato starch. Now it's time to stir and stir, and what this is going to do, not only mix in these ingredients, but it's going to also get our proteins extracted, which is going to help the bind. We had a lot of fun with our last two batches of pepperoni. We took it and we made a pepperoni pizza that had more than pepperoni. It was meat lovers all the way. It had two types of deer, two types of pork. It was unbelievable. And then the following day, we had a pizza soup video. So if you want to know how to make pizza soup and you didn't see that video, definitely go back and watch that because pizza soup is a wonderful thing. If you can't find it in my channel, just do a simple search, McGee Pizza Soup, and it'll pop right up for you. Or McGee Pizza, that'll pop up for you. If you just search McGee, there's no telling what you'll find because we put every kind of crazy thing out of it that ever was. I'll tell you, like you when you move like What about you moving like that, old you man? You think, man, you're doing real good if you move fast like that. What if you move fast like this, son? Oh, I do fast like this, son. No, you don't, son. I'm like a little girl in the morning. I'm like a freight train coming through. Freight train? You ain't joking, freight train. Worse than any freight train I ever laid eyes on, son. I don't stop for nothing. No, nope, you don't. I find on the stick right over the road. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I'm going to follow you with that camera and we'll see what happens while you're not being watched. <laughs> collagen smoked collagen casings. And we tie a knot on one end and we get started. Now, before you get started, you got to take your a needle or a sausage pricker and you got to poke this in because if you don't, it'll trap air in there and you'll be up a creek. You ready, Dave? Here we go. Let's have it. That's it for this one. All you gotta do at this point, tie your knot. 
We'll start another one. Have we done half of it yet, boys? Um, yeah. What makes you so sure? Oh, make it down over here. I'm out of here. Oh, ain't he mean? I gotta go talk to the people. Uh, you got people to talk to? Yep. Oh, man. I wonder if they don't run away and hide when they see you coming. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Frank. What? Frank Furter. Look what I got. You never pick no cotton, son. You can't play but they get the end of this, gentleman. You never pick no cotton, son. I cotton, No, you never pick no cotton, son. Frank said he's picked cotton his whole cotton picking life. Yeah, buddy. Uh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Bad boy. <laughs> what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? All right, folks, you see what we got? We hung it all right here. What I'm gonna do is let that hang for about 24 hours, give or take, maybe a little longer, maybe 48 hours. I'm happy with the way they look. I stuffed them tighter than I've ever stuffed them before. And I did that, you can see where I took my hands and just tightened it by hand. So the sticks are tighter. So maybe when they shrivel up, they won't be quite as shriveled as the last batch. folks i went over this morning and i got this stick of pepperoni out of my neighbor's cooler it has only hung there for about a week and so today we're going to do our test what i want to do is since it's wild hog it does have nitrates in it on the bag it says be sure to cook before using what i'm going to do i'm going to cut these in slices i'm going to put some in the oven on a pan I'm just going to get that temperature up just in case this hog, this wild hog, had trichinella. And trichinella will not die just by freezing the meat. This meat was frozen for a while. That don't work. There is a way to eat it raw or basically medium rare without cooking it. And that is to hold it at 135 for about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, something like that. And I've got a chart and I can throw that chart up here right now for you. The other thing is thyme and salt in combination. And you can eat a cured ham without cooking it. But I'm just gonna cut these up right here, right now. And I'm gonna put them in the oven. Now I've got some friends that are coming that's gonna help me taste it. He'll be more than happy to tell you how it tastes. Really nice, clear, defined look, and I like that. All right, we're here. We've got the pepperoni cooked, and I wasn't expecting this. This is a surprise to me. Matter of fact, this, I never dreamed of this. This fella here, Rodney, got some fat from my Mangalitsa pigs, and he made something that I don't think you've ever even thought about. And y'all have some bright little mice, we're going to break that out here in just a second and explain what it's all about. First, we're going to take some of this pepperoni. We're going to eat one by itself. He brought some bread. He toasted it on my wood stove using this. We're going to get into that here in a second, but we're going to try this pepperoni. Yeah. Wild hog. Now, the fat chunks are mangalitha. They're not. Oh, okay. So you took wild hog mixed with mangalitha fat? Sure did. And I only ground it once because I didn't want to pulverize it. This actually tastes like food. It yeah. does not taste like something I can't pronounce. Right. Which is important when you're eating food. I put double the paprika, mm -hmm. double the red wine, and an anise, 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 instead of anise. fennel. Anise instead of fennel. Hmm. I did not pick that up, but it's good. It's an improvement. And I laid it to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I think makes a difference instead of holding back, laying it on it. Yeah, I would definitely eat this. Rodney has come to get some more of my pigs. I'm not even sure exactly how many he's going to get today. All I can tell you, if you're in the market for pigs and you want some pigs, you better get down here and get them because this man is eventually going to buy me out. So I'm going to let Mr. Rodney explain to you what this is while I'm putting some on my barrette. Now, you're not going to believe what it is. It's not ranch dressing. 
I'm gonna let him describe it while I'm eating it. That way I might get some more. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Mmm. Wow. Don't worry. I'm not gonna leave things to chance. <laughs> I'll just make sure I get mine first before I explain what it is. <laughs> so what do you think of it, Micah? I love it. You love I it? I love it. How does it taste? Can you describe the taste? No. Actually, I do taste a little smokiness. Mm -hmm. It tastes buttery. It does not taste to me lardy at all. That's your first clue as to what it is. This is whipped lard. I took fat from one of Micah's mangalitsas. I ground it through a wagon wheel plate on a grinder. Honestly, any coarse grinder setting will work great. Dumped it all in a kettle, put water in. The water keeps it from burning. With the water in, you can just turn it on and it'll just sit there and boil. Partway through, once the cracklings had separated and sunk to the bottom, I actually strained them out. Hmm. Uh, now, normally you would leave them in until it was uh, finished. I think that's part of why it came out so light. Mm -hmm. And also, it melts at an extremely low temperature. Yeah. Uh, much lower than the plain uh, mangalitsa fat. Wow. From there, I added two finely chopped spring onions, several cloves of garlic, minced, uh, salt and pepper, black pepper to taste. Uh, I added probably an additional tablespoon of uh, garlic powder, okay. a third of a small onion, uh, chopped real fine. I added rosemary, sage, and parsley, as well as uh, liquid smoke. And I took some bacon that Micah made, smoked in his smokehouse out there that that tree's about to fall on. <laughs> that smoke flavor was actually too strong, so I I, I sliced off the, the edges, the, the, the crust of it. I took those slicings and I fried them, and then I blended them up into small pieces and I dumped them in with it. Mm. And then I whipped it and whipped it. I whipped it into oblivion. It is whipped. Mm -hmm. It's very light. I was so surprised when I picked it up. It's like the weight of whipped cream nearly. It's just mm -hmm. amazing. It's a little bit denser than whipped cream. Yeah, a little bit. But it's a spread or I, a dip, depending what you're eating. I honestly thought you had made me some kind of ranch dressing. That's that's what I thought it was, mm -hmm. a very light ranch dressing. Mm -hmm. And man, is it good. There you go, folks. That's my third... Trial run on pepperoni, and I am proud to say the third run was better than the second or the first. The first, in my opinion, was the worst, and so I'm not sure if I'll get a fourth run this year while we still have some cool weather and, and I'm using this stove because I really need that dry heat, about 80 degrees, to get the fermentation going with that red wine right off the bat. And let's face it, it's springtime now, or it's going to be springtime soon, and I may not have time to make no more pepperoni. But if I do, you'll be the first ones to know it. And hopefully we can make it even better than this. I have more ideas in mind. I noticed, once again, that as it shrank, I got, I got the shrinking action, the concaving. And I, would, I think I might have a way figured out around that as well, without throwing in fillers. So, that... I want to say a huge thank you to Rodney for bringing me this. He's going to be going home with some pigs. But that's all we got for you today. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.